All right, what is going on, everyone? Phil here, and welcome to my React video, or I guess you could call it a review, of The Last of Us TV series, both episodes two and three, all in this one video. Now, admittedly, when I filmed my mini review of The Last of Us episode one, I didn't know how people were going to accept it or like it or receive it. Pretty good. It's been out for about 24 hours now, and honestly, it, you know, got some pretty good feedback. Seems like people really enjoyed hearing my opinions on the show. Um... Although some people are very contentious about it. Very, very critical. Oh, you misremembered certain things about the game and stuff like that. And that's fine. It's fine. Call me out for it. Leave comments on the videos. It's all good. Okay? But I watched episodes two and three of the show last night. While that was fresh in my head, I wanted to do my review of those episodes uh, as I continue to catch up on the series so that I can get uh, ready for the new episodes coming out this week. Okay? So, episode two. <clears throat> Interesting because unlike... Episode 1, where I criticized it heavily, and I said, man, they changed a lot of stuff, and it doesn't really make logical sense. Episode 2, almost nothing whatsoever was changed from the game, except stuff that made logical sense. So cutting out all of the gameplay parts that with a lot of combat and sneaking, basically makes this an abridged version of the first three major parts of the game. They're exploring a flooded hotel, uh, they're going to a museum... And they're going to the Capitol building to meet with the Fireflies. And what was interesting about this was they did make some changes, but I think every change kind of made sense. Um, obviously, you don't need those combat segments. And therefore, because there's no combat segments, it's going to feel way more fast-paced. Within one hour, they're going through parts of the game that took several hours to get through, and that's okay. Um, at this point, I do feel like the characters are fitting more into their roles from the game. Like, I felt like Joel, Tess, and Ellie all were kind of behaving how they did during this part of the game. In addition, many of the scenes I noticed were almost shot-for-shot shot recreations from the game. The museum looks literally like the museum from The Last of Us video game. Uh, I think they actually designed the hallways, rooms, and even attractions to be lining up with what you saw in the game. And that's a good thing. That level of attention to detail is much appreciated. By the way, it should be called out. In the, my episode one review, <clears throat> I was very harsh on Neil Druckmann. Well, Neil Druckmann directed episode two of the series. I would argue this is probably a really, really well done episode um, for how he did it. You know, making it as close as he possibly could to the game without changing much. I mean, there's a few nuanced things that are changed. The order that a few things happen. Um, at the end of the episode, now keep in mind, there's spoilers, this is a review of the episode, I'm going to be telling you spoilers, if you didn't play the game yet, I mean, geez, it's been 10 years, time to play it, okay, <clears throat> so, if you remember, when they finally reach the Capitol building, um, in the game, what ends up happening is they run into, well, they're looking for the Fireflies, if you remember, and as they're looking for the Fireflies, they end up running into... Is it FEMA? Or, or I don't think they're called that. Like, wh whatever they're called, the government agency in the game, I don't think it's called the same that they're called in the, in the show. Like, they made that name up for the show. Fedra, FEMA, whatever they're called. FEMA's real, but I think they're called, like, Fedra or something like that. Um, so, basically, you end up running into a bunch of, of people who are out to kill you at the Capitol building, and there's a ton of combat, right? Like, a lot of combat at the Capitol building. And I remember sneaking around as Joel and doing stealth takedowns and everything uh, while you're trying to regroup with everyone and protect everyone. But if you remember what ends up happening is basically you're in an untenable situation. There is no escape. But then Tess fesses up and admits that she had been bitten. And we know there's no cure, right? So Tess decides she's going to sacrifice herself so that Joel and Ellie can escape these bandits that have them cornered at the Capitol building. And if, if I remember, and you guys again can correct me, isn't it true that when they're at the Capitol building, they find the fireflies, they're dead? So, again, that's very similar to what happens in this episode, where first they're going through, like, abandoned buildings and streets. Then they end up at the museum. At the museum, they run into the clickers for the very first time, correct? And the clickers are creepy as hell. First encounter with these crazy mutated creatures that looks like they can't see. They're deaf, but they're still extra deadly because they're, like, super-powered, basically, and they're out to kill you. Um, same thing happens in this, this episode. I will criticize it in this way, though. In the game, you're playing a video game. Everything is done artificially by a computer, right? 
So they probably designed these animations to make the models move a certain way and look creepy like monsters or whatever. I wasn't really sold by the clickers and the show. They looked like people wearing costumes to me. Like, especially if you if you noticed, you'll it, go watch the episode again and you're going to notice something that's very, very common in TV shows like this. Shaky cam. For some reason, as action is going on, the camera starts to shake like, instead of being a steady shot of the action, the camera starts going like this. Now, it's a directorial choice, and I actually don't, I'm not criticizing Druckmann for it in this episode. I think what it does, it disguises the fact that the clickers don't actually look perfect. You know what I mean? Like, they look like people in outfits rather than scary, creepy monsters like they do in the game. Because in the game, they're 3D rendered. They're not real. They can look as crazy as you want. In real life, if it's real-life practical effects that they're using, which they did, they're limited. So they basically made it look a little bit more realistic by having the shaky cam during the action kind of disguise the fact that I don't think they looked as scary as they could. Um, but that's neither here nor there. Um, it's still well done. And like I said, the museum scenes, all done very, very well. <clears throat> and then when they get to the Capitol building, I think the only difference there, they still find the Fireflies dead. But the difference there is that they don't run into bandits or government agents. Instead, the infected are coming. And when the infected are coming in the show, Tess is the one who sacrifices herself to stop the infected. And then Joel and Ellie get away. While in the game, she sacrifices herself to kill off the bandits that are after them. So it's a little bit of a different twist. But honestly, it's not that big of a difference. One really creepy scene is when Tess's last scene is when basically one of the creatures comes and basically puts the cordyceps tentacles into her mouth it's disgusting um or maybe it's romantic i guess it depends on your perspective <laughs> i guess if if you're a cordyceps zombie maybe you thought it was very very romantic and now he not basically he'll marry her or something but anyway i really liked episode two i thought episode two in a nutshell was very close to the game he that neil neil Druckmann tried as best as he could to remain faithful to the source material didn't veer too far from it. The characters were more in line with what I expected from the game this time. Um, Tess's death is dealt with very respectfully, even though this slight change of events, they're not, you know, fending off these bandits. Instead, they're fending off the infected. Um, still a good a good way for her to say goodbye and, and give her a big, a big explosive end, right? To say the least. Um, I really like episode two. Liked it actually way more than episode one, if you can believe it. I actually did. Um... I don't actually have much to criticize besides, like I said, the clicker's not looking as scary or realistic as they basically could, um, and the shaky cam to hide it. Outside of that, I thought it was an exceptionally good episode, okay? Now on to episode three. This seems to be the episode everyone wants me to review. People even said things like, Phil's going to get canceled for his review of episode three, okay? Why? Well, first of all, episode three opens up with Joel and Ellie together, and Joel's kind of confused as to what to do because he just lost Tess who was basically his life mate at that point. Not to say that maybe they were married or anything, but you know this is someone who he'd been working with for many years and probably was planning on surviving with for forever and didn't work out that way. And now he's stuck with this girl. So I remember they walk into a bar and Ellie sees an arcade machine. Now in the game, it's an arcade machine that's supposed to be representative of like a 1990s fighting game. Um, or is it is it a zombie game? I can't, I'm trying to remember. Basically, it's an homage to a 1990s arcade game, and she makes a reference to the characters in the game or whatever, and it's kind of neat. Well, in the show, they actually got a Mortal Kombat 2 arcade machine. Now, that was neat because Tess knew facts about Mortal Kombat 2, basically knowing like, it, like it was very nostalgic to know it, um, which I guess if she had gotten her hands maybe on some retro gaming magazines or something, maybe she would have known because she directly references the character Melina. Like, yeah, Melina, the deadly... You know, the deadly assassin who, if she takes her mask off, her face is covered in razor-sharp teeth and she eats your body and spits your bones out. I thought that was a neat twist to actually put a realistic game, a real game from real life from the 90s, into the scene and have the real arcade cabinet there. That was cool. That was a nice touch that linked directly to the games. Now, the major thing that everyone talks about in Episode 3 is the insanely different changes to the plot in regards to the character Bill, right? So, in the game, when... Joel and Ellie arrive at this town. Joel knows that Bill basically owns the town. He controls it. He's, he's one of these doomsday prepper survivalists. He set up all these booby traps around the town so that the infected don't get into the town. And if they do, they get trapped and killed. He also set it up so invaders and raiders can't do it. It's, it's basically Bill's town, right? He runs the deal. Now, they meet Bill in the game. They actually go through the entire town together. <clears throat> Bill brings them to his secret bunker. Um, they stock up. 
he, they explained their mission to him. He's like, all right, I'm going to help you through town because this is my town. You know, everyone else's bit was, was evacuated, but I'll get you through town to where you need to go. And eventually he gets them to a place where he thinks he's going to find a car battery. There is no car battery. The car battery is gone or broken, if I remember correctly. Then there's some tie into a plot line where you realize someone who used to be his life mate apparently passed away in town. And they, you, you find notes and things from this character. And then basically what you find out is that Bill was in a gay relationship with this guy. They had some kind of a falling out. And the guy eventually died in this town. But Bill, I guess, he knew but kind of never accepted it. And so there's this kind of closure. But Bill's very sad about it. And then Bill basically helps you out. And the next part of the game, you go to a high school. And it's you and Ellie going through a high school and trying to survive there. So Bill has a good segment of the game, okay? In the show, it's done completely differently. In the show, basically, it shows some flashback stuff of how Bill, in 2003, when the outbreak happened, was oh, he was a doomsday prepper. He was a survivalist. He had you know cameras in his house. And he had a hidden bunker under his house. So when the government agents were coming in to clear out the town, they didn't even know he was there, and he got left behind because he wanted to be. He then turned the town into his own personal fort, basically, locking it down with all the security cameras or whatever. And then someone who had escaped, I think he said it was from Baltimore, Maryland. Um, you know, there was a camp there that I guess got overrun by the infected and he was trying to survive. And he just stumbled upon one of the traps that Bill had laid outside of town. Uh, Bill rescues the guy, gives him his first real meal in ages because Bill has is self-sufficient. He's growing all this food and everything in town. And he makes this guy basically a gourmet meal. And the guy's blown away. By Bill's cooking skills, then Bill he finds out is a music like he can play a piano and sing, and basically they fall in love, and then it comes this this you know gay love story between two guys in this post apocalyptic environment, who end up becoming a loving couple, and then eventually how does it tie into the Last of Us because this is totally different from how it pans out in the game. How does it tie into the plot? Well, you find out that Joel and Tess eventually befriended them by talking to them on a, on a CB radio. Um, and basically, they, they came for a dinner, and then they started trading supplies. Joel actually helped Bill to fortify the settlement, telling him that, look, you need better defenses because raiders are going to come by one day. And then there's actually a big scene where uh, Bill's defenses actually protect him. And and uh, I forget the other character's name. Forgive me for this because it wasn't a big part of the game, and he was a big part of the episode. I totally forgot his name. But basically, the guy who's in a romantic relationship with, they live together. You know, they're a couple. Um Basically, he's pretending he's protecting them from invaders. He gets Bill gets shot, and then the other guy saves him and does you know surgery on him and saves his life. So it's kind of really interesting. Now, the really the part where it gets kind of really sad and depressing, and realistic is that the whole second half of the episode deals with Bill and you know his significant other now in old age because they've lived twenty years in this settlement together, defending it from all comers, all directions, right? And basically now. In a, in a surprising flip, because all the illusions in the episode previously were that Bill was the one who was going to get old and get sick. His partner gets sick. Who knows what it is? Maybe it's it's cancer, leukemia. You can't tell. And, of course, in the apocalypse, there's no proper treatment for this. So they're doing what they can, giving him drugs from the local drugstore or whatever. But he's not going to stay alive, right? So in this kind of almost Romeo and Juliet kind of finale, the two of them decide that it's going to be the guy's last day, and they, they, they both take these drugs together and choose to pass away to take their own lives because if the, if the bill's bill's significant other is going to pass away he says i had no reason to live either i lived because of you and if you're gone i have no reason to go on so you know it's rom a romantic way to go out and they do they go out together they die together um and then the end of the episode is when joel and ellie show up because joel has the gate coach he was friends with the guy and finds a letter well i guess ellie finds the letter saying that bill is leaving everything to Joel if Joel finds it. Joel will know the codes already, so he should know how to get into the bunker um, that's hidden, and they can have whatever they want. And so the episode ends with Joel basically grabbing what they need. They have a truck now, and they can drive away, and that's the end of the episode. Um, completely different, literally completely and utterly different from the story of the game, okay? The way it pans out. Basically, you never see Bill alive. He's dead by the time that Joel and Ellie get there. Um... Now, here's the thing, all right? There's two schools of thought on this. One school of thought is, <clears throat> wow, what a great episode. And the other school of thought is, wow, what a terrible episode. The people who like the episode are basically people who are like, <clears throat> wow, 
incredibly good writing. It was a story about survival, love, and the human condition. It was a story about how two guys who, against all odds, meet up out of nowhere, become almost like perfect for each other, and then, you know, go through all this 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 life, real life stuff in the apocalypse. And it's the story of these two surviving the apocalypse rather than the story of Joel and Ellie for a whole episode. It's like a departure from the first two episodes. Um, and it's really well done. It's very emotional. And, you know, great directing, great artistic direct Music is great in this episode too. Like, really, really well done. The other school of thought is this episode is absolutely horrible in an attempt to give mainstream approval to a gay relationship because the episode is basically self-contained, meaning if you removed this episode from the plot of the show, you basically the entire episode is, how did Joel and Ellie get a car? They could literally just find it, and that's five minutes of an episode, and then they're on to the next part of the plot. But instead, you have a whole hour episode about the relationship of these two guys, right? And so I've seen arguments online about how this episode is completely out of place. It's an attempt to make a mainstream gay relationship acceptable. Um, the writer should be ashamed of themselves because it has nothing to do with the plot of the show. And some people even go as far to say, you made a zombie apocalypse show. You have a whole episode with not a single zombie in it. There's no zombies in this. So how could this be part of The Last of Us? Okay. Now, here's the thing. I hear both arguments. All right. Here's what I will tell you. I thought this episode was amazing. I cried at the end. Seriously, I couldn't stop myself. It was so well written. It was so well acted. It was perfect. But here's what I think I would have liked. I would have liked this to be a two hour, not one hour, a two hour movie about the lives of these two guys and add in even more good stuff happening. Maybe have some zombies actually really, I, I take it back, there was one zombie early on in the episode that hit a trap, right? But show a zombie, maybe a, a mini zombie horde come by and show how they adapt and how they, they take, take care of that. Show how maybe they leave the town a few times, how they deal with that. Show some of their interactions with outsiders like Joel and Tess and, and make it a two hour full length feature film that's a spin off tie in to the last of a series. I do feel like the episode was absolutely amazing and I, I thought it was great TV content and I don't care if they're gay. It's still an amazing human story that made me feel so emotional, all right? Seriously, like I, I was torn up at the end. Um, at the same time, I think people have a point saying what the hell is this doing in The Last of Us? It's out of place. A story like this for a show like this maybe would have worked as the fifth or sixth episode. This is only episode three. We've just established what's going on with Joel and Ellie, that now Tess is gone, and it's Joel has to find a reason to protect Ellie and or get them somewhere safe. And all of a sudden, you have an entire episode of departure from that. It, it really kind of kills the momentum of the show, in my opinion, because of the timing. I feel like it shouldn't have been this early on in the series. Later on, it would have worked, but where it is now, it kind of breaks up the momentum of the show. Um, <clears throat> I also do think, yeah, there's a point to be said. This is supposed to be a show about the zombie apocalypse. Now, you can argue, well, The Last of Us game isn't just about the zombie apocalypse. Anyone who says that never played it. It's about human drama. I agree. I actually think the writing of The Last of Us game is some of the best writing about human drama I've ever experienced in a video game. Realistic characters who have roles, but then those roles change over time. They evolve, they differentiate, and they become different people by the end of the game. It's insanely good writing, and it absolutely is about human drama in the zombie apocalypse. You understand? The thing that makes The Last of Us stand out is that it's not just another drama. You could watch any drama on TV, right? But the difference is that The Last of Us is also set in a cordyceps zombie apocalypse. That's kind of the point. People do have a point that's a valid point saying, why does this episode really have nothing to do with zombies? You're right. I can't actually say to someone, you're wrong there. You're absolutely right. Um, again, maybe that's why this episode would have made more sense if it happened later on in the plot as opposed to so early on when we're just trying to establish the rules of the universe and everything and what's going to happen with Joel and Ellie and all of a sudden, oh, now we have this literal disconnect episode. Um, I still love the episode. I would have, like I said, I would have loved this even more if it was a standalone thing separate from the series as an, its own movie. I want to learn more about Bill and his significant other and their relationship and how they survived. The acting was so good. I want more of it. But it did break up the show, all right? Um, I loved it though. Like, I think it's a, a great episode of TV. I mean, the damn thing should win awards in my opinion, but at the same time, people have valid criticisms saying this, this didn't, 
feel like it was in place with the show. It's not. The show's about Joel and Ellie. What happened? I agree. Okay? <laughs> so, I loved it. Uh, episode 2 and 3, I like a lot. I like them way more than Episode 1, actually. I think 2 was super, super close to the games. Thumbs up. 3 was totally different from the games, but still so well done. Thumbs up. But I agree, it kills the momentum of the show and definitely should have maybe been separated or done a little differently to tie in better because it really doesn't. Okay? That's what I have to say about Episodes 2 and 3. I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please thumbs up. Please leave comments. All right? Thank you for watching, and I'll have more coming. I got to catch 4 and 5 before 6 comes out later on this week. So I'll have another one of these coming on the pipeline, guys. Thank you so very much for watching, and I'll see you all soon.